Hey everyone, welcome back to the fourth installment of Big Goals Little Steps. It's kind of crazy that we're already at the fourth one. In case you're new here, my name is Sarah and I'm the owner of Peppo Studios. Peppo Studios is a itty bitty, teeny tiny little business that I am working on. And basically the, the point of this series is to document the big goals that I have for my business and then all of the little steps that I'm taking to get there. So in the very first video in this series, I outline my big picture 2023 goals for my business. And in each video since then, I've gone through little steps that I'm setting out for the next two weeks. And then I'll do a recap as well of what I did over the past two weeks. It's been a really good accountability thing for me to kind of have these documented and make sure I'm making kind of continuous forward motion on my goals. So it's March now, which is crazy. Happy March to everybody. Um, I started this series in January, so time is just pass it as it does you know <laughs> but it is crazy it's currently snowing right outside for me so not quite spring yet where i am anyway as per usual i'm going to get started with this video by recapping what i did over the last two weeks and whether i reached the goals that i set out to do Okay, so the first goal I had set out to do was to complete the first two challenges in the sketch design repeat 3x3 three three design challenge. And I actually didn't hit this goal, but it was kind of done intentionally, and I'll tell you a bit more about that. So the first prompt for the, the first week was Snowman. And to be honest, I was not that inspired by that prompt. I was like, uh... I don't really feel like creating snowmen right now. <laughs> but I did, actually. I did sit down and I painted some. And I didn't love where I was going with them. I was like, uh, this is not the style that I'm trying to do. I don't love it. But then I was like, okay, let me try anyway. I'll keep going. So I scanned them in and I, I brought them into Illustrator, actually. And that's about as far as it got. Because I was just, like, not loving them. I, I didn't really like how they looked. I don't know. It wasn't really my style that I wanted to go for. And so I kind of tabled that for a minute. And then over the past two weeks, I was thinking about it a bit more. And I was like, okay, I think these challenges are awesome. And I think they can be a really good way to build your portfolio. But at the stage that I'm in, in my business, meaning I'm really early on and I'm still like really trying to develop my own signature style. I think it's more important for me to be creating the things that I'm really inspired by than kind of forcing myself to fit into a mold when I don't even know fully my own style anyway. And I think that was a good realization for me to say like, yes, I will do that. And I and I fully understand too that being in this industry means that you will have to respond to prompts and art directors and you know other people's vision and that's totally fine but i think that at the stage that i'm at focusing on my own style and painting things that like light me up is going to be the best way to like really nail what peppo studios is and what peppo studios creates you know so that's kind of where i am on that so i tabled that goal for now i have those prompts if i want to get back to them at some point but that point is not right now so that was that I think related to that though is another goal I had set out for the last two weeks which was to paint whatever inspires me. So it was funny that I set that out last week given everything that I just said, but I did do that. I did paint whatever inspired me and for me the past two weeks that was jellyfish. So I painted, I can't remember if I had started the first ones in the last video or not, but I painted two versions of jellyfish. The first one was very colorful and it was just my first attempt at like creating these cool jellyfish. So I can actually do a little show and tell. I know I never usually do this in these videos, but this was the first version that I painted. I liked the colors. I liked how, sorry, this is just going to be sitting in front of my face, but <laughs> I liked the different colors. When I painted these, I was very loose about it. I was just kind of like not overthinking it and, you know, creating what I thought a jellyfish looked like in my head. So overall, I mean, I, th I thought they were cool. I tried to stick with a relatively limited color palette. I, I think I used like four colors for these. And so I liked them. But here's what happened. When I brought them into Photoshop and I started creating a pattern with them, I was like, I feel like these are very rigid. They're, they felt very stiff. Like they were, they're all just kind of mostly straight up and down shapes. It's like they're not really, there's not a lot of movement. And I'm, you know, thinking about 
when you've seen a jellyfish underwater, they're so like flowy. Of course, they're like one of the flowiest creatures you could imagine. So I was like, hmm, stiff probably isn't the right vibe for a jellyfish. So I actually ended up doing a take two with these. Um, I can show you first some of the patterns that came out of my first iteration of doing this. Some things I like, like I said, the colors are cool, but they were just so rigid. So I tried again. So here is version number two. Woo! So I cut these actually so that this would fit in my scanner bed, <laughs> um, which is fine because I'm not like, I'm painting these as individual motifs for a pattern. I'm not painting this as like a piece of artwork, you know? So that's why it's cut. But obviously I did an even more limited color palette with this one. So this was just with two different colors. And I really tried to be intentional about making these move a lot more, right? I made them flow and and I, I put my pattern kind of hat on and I, as I painted one, I tried to paint the others to fill in the space a little bit more than I had thought about it because I knew that's what I was gonna have to do when I brought it into Photoshop. I knew I was gonna have to find spaces for everything to fit. And in doing this, it worked so much better. Let me show you some of the patterns that I made using these motifs. So I actually ended up taking Kat Koch's Skillshare course on creating patterns with your watercolor art and it blew my mind. It like, <laughs> I felt bad. So I was actually here, I was sitting on this couch when I was doing it last week and my partner was sitting over here and literally like every five minutes I had to take on my AirPods and I was like, this is changing my life. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. This is the best thing I've ever learned. And like, I, I was freaking out. Oh, hey, this is my baby. <laughs> Hang on, let me pause this to introduce you to our special guest here. Pumpkin, we come say hi? <laughs> this is Pumpkin. She's actually the namesake of Peppa Studios. I'll get into that at another time. But anyway, as I was taking this class, it was actively changing my life as I was going through it. It was crazy because basically Kat goes through a flow for turning your watercolor into a pattern that is way smoother than anything I've ever encountered before. In particular, her method for removing the background was so good. That's something that I just, it's been a giant time suck for me. And I followed a lot of other people's methods and tutorials for doing that. And I'm like, there's gotta be a better way. This is taking so long. And the way that she does it is fast. And she says, like, it took me probably 20 minutes because it was my first time doing it, but she was like, it might have even taken me longer, maybe half an hour, which was still faster than some of the other stuff I was doing before. But then she said, you know, when she's like not actively teaching and she's like just in her normal flow, it takes her less than five minutes to do that. And I totally believe it. So anyway, her methods were awesome. One of the things I really loved from that class is she got into how she goes about recoloring her hand painted motifs. So I made like 10 different colorways for this jellyfish pattern. And I can show you some of those here too, including one that has glitter little bits in it. It's, I was like, what? It's crazy. So anyway, I really loved creating those. And for me, honestly, this was the first pattern where I was like, yes, yes, this is my vision. This is what I want my patterns to be like. And it was an interesting difference and like contrast between that snowman experience where I was making those and I was like, no, I just, no. Mm -mm. And then I made these jellyfish and I was like, yes, <laughs> this is amazing. Okay, so that was a lot to say about that, but it was just a huge win for me. So I was really excited about how that one went. And I'm really excited to see where that continues to in the future. Um, the biggest downside though, with this new method of creating patterns is that I a thousand percent am gonna need to purchase additional storage, like an, an external hard drive. I actually have one that's one terabyte, but I'm gonna need more than that probably because this method, you scan in your artwork at a super high resolution, like 1200 DPI. And you also create large document format files. And my files are like eight gigabytes each. They're giant. 
So I'm gonna have to figure that one out. But I can leave a link to Cat Coke's Skillshare class that I'm talking about. I'm not like a Skillshare affiliate or anything. I have watched like 20,000 classes, but it's just a really, really good class. So highly recommend it. Okay, here's a quick one. So one of my goals was to finish Bonnie Christine's Secrets to Success in Service Pattern Design workshop. And I did that, so that was great. I had said I wanted to kind of go through a couple of those workshops or, um worksheets and I did that too. So yeah, and, and it was great. I really liked it. Bonnie structures this workshop so that it's leading up to the launch of her kind of signature course called Immersion. Um, if you want to learn about Immersion, I actually just posted a video about it right before this, so you can go ahead and watch that one to get a little bit more detail. But I basically spent the weekend after that workshop, so like last weekend, just like really really thinking about whether or not I wanted to take immersion because it's a huge investment and I did. I did end up going for it. So I'm going to talk about it a bit more in my goals for the next two weeks but if you want to hear more about my decision making and kind of thought process and the emotions I went through to get to saying yes to immersion, I did do a whole video on that and I did cry in it twice which is... I don't... <laughs> it happened. So anyway, if you want to see me shed tears in front of the whole world. That's in my previous video. Okay, the next goal that I had set out for myself was whatever came next for my branding. Two weeks ago, I didn't really know what the next step would be. The ball was kind of in the designer's court and she was gonna come back to me and tell me what she needed from me next. And it was a very exciting update in the past two weeks. So it was actually just a couple of days ago that the brand designer got back to me and she sent me the initial kind of design of my branding. I was, it was so exciting and honestly, I was kind of nervous to open the email because I was like, what do I do? I was like, what do I do if I don't like it? Wh what happens? I don't know how that works, but I opened it and I was like, oh, I love it so much. <laughs> I really love it. Like she has done a really good job with it. And she basically sent me like a couple versions of the primary logo, um, a secondary logo, some hand-drawn icons, and then the color palette. I'm so in love with the color palette. It's so beautiful. And I'm really, really excited about it. So I'm not gonna show you at this stage, like where we are right now with the branding. I'm gonna wait until it's finalized and then I'll show you everything. So I'm really excited about that. And I'll talk about that a little bit more when I get into the what's coming for the next two weeks. Okay, so the next goal I had set out was to build my homepage and my portfolio page in my website. I actually have a little bit of a story to tell here on this front. Okay, so if you watched the past couple of videos, you know that I'm building my website through Squarespace. In my very first Big Goals Little Steps video, I had set out a goal to watch this YouTube series from these people who I really love. I love what they do, and it's about building a Squarespace site. And I knew that the series was a few years old, but I was like, yeah, it's probably still helpful. Like, it's probably a good starting place still um, because these people are awesome and they've done really great things and whatever. So I watched that series and it was great. And when I went to set up my own site, I was like, hmm, it's kind of weird that the template that they worked on isn't here in like the main feed kind of on Squarespace where you get to start your site and pick your template. So it's like, huh, weird, I don't know. So then I Googled the template and I found it when I Googled it and I was like, sure, yeah, I'll just start from here. And I did that. And long story short, basically what happened is that that original template, which is called the Brine template, a lot of websites were built off of that template, was built through Squarespace 7.0. But everything now is built through Squarespace 7.1. So I was basically working in an outdated version of Squarespace and it took me a minute to realize that but basically as I was building my website in that 7.0 version I was like why do I feel like it's fighting me so much like why do I feel like I can't get it to do what I want it to do and also I was like I thought Squarespace was supposed to be like a very intuitive like easy to use kind of handholdy situation and that was not what was happening at all and I was like something is not right. So I was having to watch a lot of tutorials for how to do stuff, and when I would watch these tutorials, it was very clear that their Squarespace looked a lot different from my Squarespace. So when I looked into it a little bit more, I realized that there was this issue with me using basically an outdated version. So then it turns out there's no easy way to switch from 7.0 to 7.1. Like you can't just like click upgrade and, and that's it. It's actually kind of a hassle. Basically what you end up having to do 
is start a new free trial, build a new website using a 7.1 template, then you can transfer your domain over to your new website, and then you have to cancel your subscription on your old website, and then start a new subscription on your new website. So it was a lot of moving parts there, and I will say the customer support was as good as they say in all the ads and everything. It was really good. They helped me a lot. They were super easy and direct and kind and straight to the point, so that was great. It was all good. And it's done now, and I'm really glad that it happened like this because now my website is so much better. <laughs> like, it looks so much better than it did before, and I'm really excited about it. I'm not gonna show you much right now because I don't want to give away like the branding stuff. Just yesterday I started incorporating my brand colors into my website and it's very exciting. But like I said, I don't want to give that all away uh, quite yet, so I'll give you a little sneak peek. <laughs> but I'm really excited for where this is coming. So anyway, my initial goal was to build my homepage and my portfolio page, and I did both of those things. Now I will say they'll probably change a lot going forward, but they are built. My portfolio page is kind of funny right now because it's mostly stock images, and it has my two, my jellyfish pattern and my giraffe patterns that I really like. I'm not putting in my patterns that I don't like. I don't want to show that <laughs> in my portfolio, my public facing portfolio, but it's really cool. It's like now it's set up so that if you click on the like, image of a portfolio it's gonna take you to another page like a project page and I'm gonna put in a bunch of mock-ups of what these designs would look like on different products and stuff so it's great very exciting I've also built a couple other pages too in my website so like there's a contact page um, there's a blog page that I need to fill out yeah and that's kind of it but I've like put a link to my like Instagram feed so it's it is coming along okay so those were my goals for the past two weeks and now I'm gonna get into the goals that I've set for myself for the next two weeks. So the first goal is maybe not a surprise, but that's to start immersion. Now, like I said, I do have a whole video about my thought process in getting started with immersion and, and choosing to do this huge commitment. So go ahead and watch that if you are interested in hearing more. But I will also say that you're probably gonna hear a lot more about immersion over the next two months because the reality is it's a very immersive experience and I wanna jump in fully, meaning it's gonna be a huge time commitment for me. Between basically now, so early March, and then through early to mid-May, I'm gonna be putting a lot of time and energy and effort into this course. Not only to make sure I get my money's worth, of course, but also to, like, my goal is really to take what I learned in this course and implement it into my business. So I have a lot of work to do for this course, and I'm gonna be sharing a lot about it. I'm probably gonna do some separate immersion videos to go through, like, my experience with the course so I know a lot of folks are probably interested to see like is it worth it what do you learn like hopefully there are differences in my before and afters and things like that so keep an eye out for that if that's something you're interested in immersion starts on Monday March 6th so there's gonna be an orientation week that's next week and then the modules start the following week March 11 so lots of immersion updates to come I would anticipate that over the next two months a lot of my goals that I said out in this Big Goals Little Step series are going to be related to this course. So plenty of updates to come on that front, of course. Okay, the next goal that I have for the next two weeks is to just get back to the brand designer that I'm working with, with my initial feedback on her designs that she's sent over my way. Like I said, overall, I really love them a lot. There's just some little tweaks that I think would be worth exploring a little bit. So I think, I mean, we'll see. It depends on her schedule and workload, and I am in no rush with getting, I, like, I, I have no deadline or anything, so that's what I keep telling her is like, if you've got clients that have like more strict deadlines, go ahead and prioritize them. Like you do, you can kind of put me in the back burner if you need to. So we're not in like a huge rush with my stuff at all. So, you know, I don't know, but it's possible that in the next two weeks, so before we get to the next Biggles Little Steps video, I may have some final branding to show you. So that's really exciting. I'm sure I'm gonna be incorporating that into my YouTube channel. It's gonna take some time for me to do all the things. Like there's only so many things you can do. And I also like, I'm not gonna focus my time I'm necessarily on things that don't really matter that much, like my YouTube end screen and stuff like that. <laughs> but over time, I will make sure all my branding gets into all of these things. Okay, my next goal that I've set for the next two weeks 
next is to actually set up my professional email. So the Squarespace plan that I selected is actually the business plan. I toyed with the idea of either doing the personal plan or the business plan, and I ultimately landed on the business plan for a couple of reasons. One of the big benefits though to selecting the business plan is that it does come with a free year for the Google Workspace account. So what that means is you get a professional email address. So I will have an email address that's at peppostudios.com. And you know, it is more expensive to do this plan. And after that free year, you're also gonna have to pay for your Google Workspace as well. But the reality is I'm in a space now where I am really trying to start treating my business like a business. And I know that if I'm interacting with clients, for example, and using my personal Gmail address, that's just not a good look, you know? And it's gonna be a lot harder for me to be seen professionally if I'm doing something like that. So that's really exciting. That's I'm gonna have to figure out how to do, but once I do have that email address set up, I'm gonna make sure to put it in places like my Instagram bio, and of course it's gonna be on my website. I actually have a whole contact page set up on my website, so anything that comes through there will go directly to my professional email address. So that's an exciting update that uh, I will be working on in the next few weeks. Okay, so now we're getting into the more creative, kind of artistic side of my goals. So my first of these creative goals is to return to the jellyfish paintings that I did. And basically, I really want to create some mock-ups using those designs. I actually put a question box in my Instagram stories a few days ago, and I asked people, like, what products could you envision this pattern on? Um, and people were thinking further out of the box than what I've done because I had previously been mostly thinking about paper goods. I've said that on here before, but like I'm thinking about things like gift wrap and tissue paper and maybe wallpaper and that kind of thing. But I hadn't really been thinking down the fabric line, but some people were saying things like, oh, like shower curtains or like beach totes, for example, that kind of thing. But the one that I was the most excited about, and actually two people said this and I was like, <laughs> was a, they were saying, what about those short sleeve button downs just like covered in jellyfish? And I was like, oh, I want that so bad. <laughs> like, I am on a personal mission to collect as many like animal print, not like, I guess it could be like a leopard print or something like that, but like I'm thinking like my jellyfish, like prints covered in animals in my clothing that I can. And I don't have a ton right now, but I was like, <laughs> can you imagine if I had a shirt with my own jellyfish on it? Like how cool would that be? So anyway, I'm gonna make some mock-ups that'll give me the benefit of one, like improving my mock-up game. I've done a couple before, but I think that's something I could get better at and also so it'll probably involve like, I'll, if I can buy some inexpensive mock-ups off of Creative Market or something like that that I can just use over and over again with all the different patterns that I create, that's probably gonna be well worth my time and money to figure that out. And also, I mean, obviously a benefit of a mock-up is just being able to visualize what this pattern would look like out in the real world. So that's coming soon. Okay, so my fifth and final goal for the next two weeks is to create three more patterns. So I painted a couple new motifs over the past few days. I started actually with some orcas. I was feeling inspired by the jellyfish and I was like, I'm gonna try and stick with things that are also like have the potential to be flowy, like a lot of movement. And so of course I was still thinking of underwater creatures and I really love orcas. They are terrifying but also so cool. So I was like, ah, maybe I'll try that. And so I've done a little bit of playing with the orcas and I'll show you more in the next video. I think they're not bad for a first step. I might play with them as a pattern, but to be honest, they also come across as a little bit stiff to me. So I might play with them again and see like how I can get a little bit more movement into there. I also started painting some butterflies, which is very fun. This is a fun fact about me. My background is in ecology and I am in the world of environmental science by day, but a lot of my studies that I've done in the past revolve around bugs. I've done a lot of bug, a lot of bug stuff. <laughs> my entire thesis was on beetles. So anyway, I have it, I've had it in my mind that I definitely want to be painting and creating patterns about bugs. I think they're really beautiful and I think that it's cool to show that side of them. Obviously, it is no hot take that butterflies are cool and beautiful, so maybe that's an easy way to get started with my bugs. But probably I'll be incorporating some other creepy crawlies down the line. But I got started with butterflies and 
Uh, I think they're at a good starting place. I'm gonna try my best to incorporate more movement into them, take the lessons I learned from my jellyfish and apply them to all my other patterns going forward. I also painted some just like lines and squiggles and blobs and stuff like that because I have been doing a lot of these, I guess, kind of hero patterns, you know, like very um, subject forward patterns, but you'll also hear about things like coordinates, which are just like stripes or polka dots or plaid or you know whatever that go along with these hero patterns that you create. So I'm still gonna try and maintain that hand painted look with those. I just haven't I haven't done it before. So that's something that I'm also gonna be trying to do. Okay. So those are my goals for the next two weeks. Just as a quick recap, here are the five goals that I have set out. My first goal is to start Bonnie Christine's Immersion Chorus. Woohoo, that's super exciting. That starts on Monday. My second goal is to send feedback to the brand designer I'm working with and kind of get the ball rolling with whatever final changes that need to be made before all my branding stuff is finalized. So fingers crossed, maybe I'll be able to show you the final result. Next, Big Goals Little Steps video. If not the next one, I bet it will be by the one after that. Okay, my third goal is to set up my professional email address and probably get started in terms of like putting it on my Instagram bio and maybe here in these videos and um, of course on my website as well. Okay, my fourth goal is into the creative realm. I'm going to be creating some mock-ups using the jellyfish print that I have made, um, including some of the different colorways. I have to make a mock-up using that short sleeve button down because I just, I love, I love the idea so much. Okay, and then my fifth and final goal for the next two weeks is to create at least three more patterns using some of the motifs that I've already painted, or maybe kind of repaint them if I want to make them looser, more flowy, things like that. So as a reminder, that was the orcas, the butterflies, and then some just coordinates with stripes or polka dots or whatever. So that is it. Thank you for hanging in there with me through this video. I hope you enjoy seeing all these little things that I'm doing to work consistently towards my big business goals. And with that, I will see you in two weeks for the next Biggles Little Steps video. Take care, everyone.